Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Mass Effect. And I'm really glad you guys enjoyed the um, first stream of the series. I know I did. It's kind of like running into an old friend and having all of those old memories start kind of flooding back into your mind. So um, we went through all of Eden Prime, or what was left of it. We saw Saren's betrayal, and now we are here in the Citadel about to um, do some exploration. Now, you may notice that things may look a little bit differently than the first stream, and I'll explain why. So apparently the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which I'm playing right now, is very, very, um, I guess, buggy, for lack of a better term, on PC. Like, people who have, like, the four the 4K era NVIDIA cards are still having, like, frame drops and stuff in different areas of the game. And we were no different. We were having some uh, pretty significant frame drops here in the Citadel. So I just went ahead and saw that the Legendary Edition was on sale on the PS5. So we went ahead and grabbed it. So I went ahead and played to this point. I think we have all of the same equipment and everything, so we should be in good shape. The only thing that I think is really going to change is when we do the the breaking into electronics, we have to play basically Simon instead of that kind of weird Frogger game. Otherwise, I think that um, we should be having the, a very similar experience. So if it looks like I'm kind of struggling with the buttons, it's because I'm just I'm doing it on a different controller than I was before. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and um, explore. We've got Avena over here, but we did not go this way. Well, that's dangerous, leaving diplomatic documents out. I can't believe I landed a job here. This place is fantastic. Diplomatic archive. Human delighted welcome. It is good to meet you. It is good to meet you too. I think those the Elcor would get along really well with the um Aliens from Galaxy Quest. Executor Palin. I always pronounce it as um, Executor, just because of Darth Vader's flagship. Commander Shepard, I didn't expect to see you here. Did Ambassador Udina send you? Have we met before? No, but I know you well enough. I'm Executor Palin, head of CSEC. It's my job to know when someone like you arrives on the Citadel. Was there something you needed, Commander? We're getting an icy reception. Tell me about CSEC. CSEC provides necessary police and security services throughout the Citadel. We're a civilian government agency, though many of our members have had military training. Of course, as the CSEC representative to the Council, I spend most of my time liaising between the two. He sounds thrilled with that. Tell me about your investigation into Saren. Sorry, Commander. I don't make a habit of giving out details about ongoing investigations. What do you know about the Spectres? They're the right hand of the Counselor, so they like to be called. More like the underhanded side of the council. This guy doesn't like anyone. What do you have against the Spectre? I can't abide any organization that considers itself above the law. Especially when it's left up to each individual Spectre to decide when and how to bend the rules. Sometimes you have to bend the law to keep people safe. I've been with CSEC for 30 years. I've never had to break the law to do my job, not once. Yeah, right. You expect us to believe none of your officers are corrupt? There are over 200,000 CSEC agents. Some of them are going to be bad. But we don't turn a blind eye to corruption like the Spectres do. We do our best to find and punish any officer who breaks the law. Spectres? <laughs> They'll never come under that kind of scrutiny. 
I mean, don't get me wrong, we've had kind of a bad run of Spectres right now, but... The galaxy needs people like that. People who do the dirty jobs. I agree. But they need to be held to a higher standard. They need to be accountable. Saren's out of control. We both know that. But because he's a Spectre, the Council doesn't want to do anything about it. Is that the kind of person this galaxy needs? Granted. But not all Spectres are like Saren. True. But the potential is always there. Let's address the elephant in the room. I get the feeling you're not too fond of humans. No, I just don't trust your kind. Not yet. You humans are eager to take all the power you can get, and you're being given a lot. If the Council wants to make humanity their new favorite pet, that's their business. But I don't have to like it. The Council treats us like second-class citizens. We have to fight for everything we get. Good. Then fight for it. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take it. I'm a busy man, Commander. Are we done here? I guess we are. I'll be going now. Goodbye, Commander. But first, we're going to uh, peruse your office for anything valuable. Ooh. Begin manual override. Yeah, so this is the new thing we have to do. Just press them in sequence. Diplomatic advisory warning. The following message was transmitted from an untraceable account to multiple recipients across the extranet. Further monitoring of the situation is warranted. My fellow biotic, you have been selected to receive this transmission because of our shared plight. Few understand us and fewer tolerate us. We must stand together. We must build our own new world. Come, join us in the Hawking Eta Cluster. Only as one body can we right the wrongs done to our kind. Biotics kind of give off a um, telepaths from Babylon 5 kind of energy. Also, um, off camera, when I was kind of replaying, there was also a console in the ambassador's office where we started when we got here to the uh, Citadel. We did get another one too. While on the Citadel, you uncovered an Alliance patrol report. One of the patrols mentioned some strange activity in the Hydra system of the Argos Row cluster. So, we'll travel there too. Just adding things to the shopping list. Yep, things are definitely kicking here. Don't believe the rumors. The consort would never reveal her secrets. Of course she would. She'd be tossed out the nearest airlock if she did. Uh, I suppose. Besides, Nick, the consort's nothing like the girls back on the colonies. <laughs> she's... she's... You don't have to do it with her. You can just talk to her if you want. <laughs> Is that all you did, Jazz? Just talk? I didn't say that. Ha! <laughs> I bet you did too. Gentlemen. Shut up, Fredericks. What do you want? Oh, Commander. Is there something I could do for you? Relax, Private. This isn't an inspection. Right. Sorry. What can I do for you, Commander? What can you tell me about the Asari Consort? I, uh... Well, she's an Asari who works here as... That is, she helps people with... things. You never want to see her, did you, Fredericks? I, uh... No, I never did. <sighs> I couldn't afford it. It costs half a year's credits just to go in and talk to her. Can you at least tell me where I can find her? Sure. She's across the bridge from the embassies. Thanks, kid. Have fun. Try not to get into too much trouble. I will. Have fun, that is. <laughs> Enjoy that shore leave. Nasana. I don't have time to talk now. I'm very busy. Nada for Nasana. Hello, Commander. Can I get you something? What have you got? Information, mostly. Would you like to know about some points of interest nearby? I'd prefer alcohol, but... What's going on around here? 
Well, you found the embassies. Not much going on here. Across the bridge, you'll find the bank, the Emporium, and Shaira's. If you haven't heard of her, you soon will. If you need supplies, you can try the markets one level below. For entertainment, I'd try Flux or Cora's Den. What is Shaira's? The consort? Uh, she entertains clients who can afford her services. Most of the diplomats and ambassadors have visited her at one time or another. She's a very powerful woman, but also very respected. Reminds me of a companion from Firefly. Tell me about Flux and Cora's Den. Well, Flux has gambling and dancing, certainly more lively than this place. Cora's Den, on the other hand, well, let's just say it's livelier and deadlier all at the same time. Ooh. Goodbye. So long, Commander. Have a pleasant day. If you sold alcohol, I would have tipped you. Now, if I recall correctly, these guys are called Keepers. And they don't talk, but they're the ones, like, in charge of keeping the Citadel floating. For lack of a better term. They're like heavy-duty custodians. This place seems strange. I wish there were more humans around. That's gonna get you friends here. Especially for a diplomat. Okay. I think that's this area explored. Let's go ahead and talk to Cortana. Welcome to the Presidium. Allow me to be your guide. Or Avina. Greetings and welcome to the Presidium. My name is Avina, and I am pleased to be your virtual guide throughout this level of the Citadel Space Station. What does that mean? I am a fully interactive virtual intelligence. Programmed to provide spontaneous guidance at predetermined locations of interest throughout this level of the Citadel. I may also be contacted through any of the Presidium VI terminals, should you require assistance. Give me the tour. You are standing at Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. On either side of this lobby are the embassies of the various Citadel races, along with CSEC headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I want to know more about Citadel Security. Citadel Security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. So I wonder how many humans are in CSEC. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. So, chat, do you prefer humanity, like in sci-fi, being called humanity, or being called humans, or being called Terrans? I've always preferred Terrans as the name. Why were people trying to keep my species out? Some species felt humanity was given preferential treatment. It often takes a century or more before a new species is granted an embassy. The Council gave a great deal of thought to this matter. In the end, they decided humanity's impact on Citadel space was significant enough to warrant an embassy. Do you agree with their decision? I am not programmed to make that kind of qualified judgment. My code is limited to information and simple interaction simulations. How come the Volus were the first species given an embassy? In the early years following the formation of the Council, the Volus were, apart from the Asari and Salarians, the most populous and widespread species in Citadel space. 
They established many new colonies and trading outposts, and they petitioned the Council for a greater role in determining interstellar policy. In recognition of their work to expand interstellar trade and establish a standardized galactic economy, the Volus were granted an embassy here on the Citadel. You like Terrans from a sci-fi point of view? It's less anthropocentric? Hmm. Why weren't they made a council race? The council races have extensive responsibilities. They must provide personnel and ships for the Citadel fleets. They often provide economic aid in times of disaster. It would be unfair to demand such an enormous burden of a species unable to meet these obligations. The embassies allow lesser species to have a voice on the Citadel. That's pretty damn arrogant. I apologize if my personality has offended you. Please submit all formal complaints in writing to the Citadel Tourist and Visitor Board. <laughs> lesser races. Do you know anything about Spectres? The term Spectre is derived from the branch of Special Tactics and Reconnaissance. Each Spectre agent is handpicked by the Council. Their primary role is preserving galactic stability and resolving volatile situations that cannot be handled through normal political channels. In this role, they are granted extraterritorial rights and jurisdictions. Spectres answer to no law or authority except the Council itself. What can you tell me about the Citadel Council? Originally, the Council consisted of representatives oh, from the Asari I think I and already Zarian, asked about this. The two dominant species in Citadel space. Roughly yep. 1,304 galactic standard years ago, Turians were invited to join the Council in recognition of the role they played during the Krogan Rebellion. Since then, the three Council races have worked together to ensure the peaceful coexistence of the galactic community while preserving individual autonomy for each species. Okie dokie. Goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. The elevator to CSEC Academy is located down the ramp to your left. The Alliance docking bay can be found there. Citadel Tower is the tall white structure far off to your right. It houses the council and is the heart of Citadel politics. Okay, um... I know the game wants us to go this way, but we'll go this direction. You must talk to the council to access to the gain access to the wards. Okay, well, fine. Be that way. I believe that is a Krogan statue there. How's it looking, chat? Comparatively to what it was. And I believe we have a taxi service, too. It's looking good? Excellent. Oh, no! Caden? Okay. Got kidnapped. He was being bullied down below. You use Citadel Rapid Transit to travel quickly between major locations. As you explore the Citadel, more locations will unlock. Well, let's head across here. So one thing we were talking about before is one of the reasons that it, it runs so strangely on computers is from how I understand it. I don't know if this is accurate or not. Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 run much smoother on PC um, because there was like a dedicated um, framework around the games. Rearranged five times. Oh. Five times? Why? What do they want? How should I know? 
It's not like keepers offer an explanation for what they're doing. And yet, everyone just lets them go on doing whatever it is they do. What choice do we have? If you try to stop them, they just shut down and another one replaces it. Just strange that we know so little about them. Not to mention frustrating. Um, the original Mass Effect was essentially like this Frankenstein um, framework that it was it's kind of surprising they were able to get it to run so, okay we got this again one of the primary reasons of ways that people were able to fix mass effect on PC was to unplug all of the controllers Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the Financial District, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the Council. What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2200 years ago, explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race, the Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. Tell me more about the Krogan Rebellions. In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni, then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's going to stop the Turians? I am sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Call me weird, but I'm still sad you can't romance a Krogan. Why did the Council fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The Council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. Hmm. Hmm, say serves them right. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Okay. That heads up. Just gonna take our time here, friendos. Emporium shopkeeper. Ooh, mutagen canisters. Ah, human. This 
This one is greatly pleased to see you here in my decadent emporium. Who are you? This one's face name is Delaninder, though many in this place simply refer to it as Delan. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase, all of great worth. What exactly do you sell? Only the finest and most luxurious items that credits can buy. This one is able to procure almost any item the human would desire, for a price, naturally. Why do you refer to yourself as this one and it? For the same reason that humans are so inquisitive. It is part of our culture. So shut up! Specifically, Hanar only refer to themselves in the first person with family or intimates. And we rarely do so with other species. It is just our way. Who are you? Oh, oops. Please take time to examine the fine goods it has for purchase, all of great worth. Show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Non-human armors? How much money do we have? Ah. Turian Krogan armor. Unkar. Unkar. Commander, it is good to see you again. Would you care to see some of its fantastic items today? Show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. Hardened weave. 11% hardening protection against both biotic and tech attacks. Shield battery, shock absorber. Show me your items. Oh, this one is... I think the standard items are just all the human ones. Citra Foundation license for the Normandy Quartermaster. Or Serta, excuse me. We can get ourselves a mattress? Yes, please. What's going on up here? Is this where the secret stock is? Oh, I wasn't actually serious. That does make sense that it would be here, though. Huh. See what's up here. I believe this will lead to the consort. Maybe. Or this just leads back across. You do. Nalina. Welcome, I am Nelina. I don't recognize you as one of our expected clients today. Would you like me to see when the consort will be able to meet with you? Can't I just go in? Mm, I'm afraid not. Yeah, you must understand there are many who seek the consort services. But if you wish to leave your name, she'll make every effort to meet with you. What do you do here, Nelina? I'm one of the consort's acolytes. Many of the people here today will not see the consort, but they expect to be attended to just the same. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What exactly do you attend to? Well, each acolyte has her unique abilities. Some soothe with song, others with conversation. As much as possible, we seek to match the needs of our clients to the skills of our acolytes. My specialty is touch. My fingertips can find every tension point in your body. 
and relieve it. I'd like to try out your services. Excellent. I'll add you to our client list. We should be able to see you in... Mm, mm, three or four months. Goodness. Okay, well, I'm not going to say no. Um... What do you do here? I'm one of many of the people. It's our job to ensure that they leave contented. What is the consort? What does she do? Mm, it's difficult to explain. She's many things to many people and something different for each. Some seek her for advice, some for entertainment, others still for pleasure. Most of the time, our clients won't realize what they were seeking until after she has provided it for them. You make her sound like some kind of oracle. No, not in the usual sense. She's merely a woman. A woman with remarkable compassion and a generous spirit. I suggest you make an appointment and see for yourself. Hmm. I think I'm done here. Oh, well, I hope you'll return again in the future. We always enjoy seeing new clients. Nalina. Yes, Shaira? Send the commander up to see me. I wish to speak with him. Yes, of course, mistress. Huh. It appears the consort has taken notice of you. She'd like to meet with you now. What does she want to see me for? I don't know. You'll have to ask <laughs> the, yourself. The anime. Just uh... upstairs. She'll be waiting for you. I see even the humans find the consort irresistible. Welcome. It is a pleasure to see you. This is my first time. I can't believe I didn't come sooner. Oh, okay. I have a... That one has a more humanish voice. You're with the Alliance? My brother's a private back on Earth. Okay, you got a big bubble bed, a table with drinks, and that's about it. That is close enough, Commander. I've heard a great many things about you since your arrival here in our Citadel. What exactly do you do? That depends on your needs. I offer advice to some, comfort to others. I have a certain problem that could use your expertise. Maybe I can help. I have a friend, Septimus, a retired Turian general. I won't discuss the details, but he wanted me to be more than I could be. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in Korra's den, drinking and spreading lies about me. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe he will listen to you and let the matter be. What happened between you? I respect his privacy too much to go into the details. If he wishes to tell you what happened, that is his prerogative. Okie doke. What exactly do you want me to tell him? Appeal to his sense of honor. Remind him of his position as a general. If you can convince him to stop spreading lies about me, I would be very grateful. Now I must ask you to take your leave. I have many clients waiting to see me. You wanted to show off your head liku? I have many questions. Please, Commander. I ask that you return to me only after you have spoken with Septimus. Leku is what they call the um, head tentacles on a Twi'lek or Twi'lek in Star Wars. Alrighty. I have to admit I'm a little nervous. That's understandable. Many are a little unsure what to expect their first time. Don't get me wrong. 
I've only heard good things about the consort. It's just... The unknown forces us out of our comfort zone. It forces us to be vulnerable. Exactly. That's just what I was thinking. Good. Then we are ready to begin. Fetch the oils! Few are ever asked to aid Shaira. It's quite an honor. What do you know about the general? He's been seeing the consort for longer than I can remember. Then one day, he stormed out of here furious. He hasn't been back since. He was always very respectful to the Acolytes. Very noble. I think I'm done here. Of course. Come back anytime. Okay. Got a little bit of info. And we already went that way. To the wards, which we do not have access to because we got to go to Citadel Tower. What's this? One of the Earth Clan. Ah, a very famous one, yes? You are the one called Shepherd. The tale of how you survived the great tragedy on Akuz is truly remarkable. I am amazed each time I hear it. You've got me at a disadvantage here. Forgive me, Earth Clan. My name is Barla Vaughn. My job makes it necessary for me to keep informed. I am a financial advisor to many important clients here on the Citadel. When someone as important as yourself arrives on the station, I take notice. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations from dozens of interstellar economies. I'm an expert in how all these economies interact. For a fee, I share my expertise. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct business without drawing unwanted attention. Discreet and efficient. That's my motto. My lord, is that legal? Sounds pretty shady. Everything I do falls completely within the bounds of interstellar commerce law. Even so, many of my clients would prefer their transactions remain undisclosed. For example, suppose a Hanar ambassador was petitioning the council to reduce tariffs on Hanar goods. How would it look if he had money invested in a Hanar exporting company? Even if his true motives were to help his people, he would be accused of advancing the petition for his own personal gain. I can keep his personal finances private. Tell me more oh, about your job. I also offer premium services for those clients who need someone to conduct... What's it like living here on the Citadel? The station is, without a doubt, the greatest wonder in the galaxy. It is a technological marvel, but its true splendor goes much deeper than the hull and engines. From the Presidium to the wards, the entire station is a testament to the success of the Council. All the species of Citadel space together in a single strong community. It may be one of those situations where his race not being on the council allows him to operate because he's not looked at under such a watchful eye. What makes the Presidium so special? It is the political center of Citadel space. 80% of all intelligent species in the known galaxy acknowledge the council's authority on interstellar matters. But only the most powerful and influential species have embassies here on the Presidium. This level of the station is reserved for the elite, Shepard, people like us. What are the wards like? The cultural heart of the galaxy. They pulse with the lifeblood of millions of citizens from dozens of different species. You never know what you'll find out in the wards, Commander. It's always full of surprises. Fortunately, most of them are pleasant. Okay, well... I should go. Goodbye, Commander. 
I was wondering if you were going to have a job for me. Well, let's take a loop around here. And then head into the Citadel Tower, I guess. Look at that bug thing over there. It's working, you racist. <laughs> Please do not disturb the keepers. Okay, I'll talk to Abina here in a sec. We'll see if there was anyone we could talk to here. leads to the wards. Yeah, which we cannot go to. Alright, let's go have a chat with the council after we talk to Avina. So I think we'll get some info on this statue and on the keepers themselves. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 2. You are standing near the base of the Citadel Tower, one of the Presidium's most recognizable and important structures. Behind me is the spectacular Relay Monument, a scale model representation of a Prothean mass relay. To your left is one of the Keepers, the enigmatic caretakers of the Citadel, working on a control panel. You may see Keepers involved in various tasks throughout all levels of the Citadel, we ask that you do not interfere with them in any way. The Keepers are essential to the smooth operation of the Citadel. Obstructing their daily work will result in harsh penalties, including incarceration and rehabilitation. Tell me about the Relay Monument. Discovered by the Asari who first arrived at the Citadel, the Relay Monument is one of the station's most interesting and controversial features. What is the meaning behind this striking piece of art? Is it a tribute to Prothean vanity? A reminder of their conquest of the galaxy through mass relay technology? Or perhaps it is a symbol of unity? A Prothean acknowledgement that the relays would eventually lead other species here to the Citadel? No one can say for sure, making the relay monument a favorite topic of discussion among academics and scholars. Might be a little of column A, a little of column B. Tell me about the Citadel Tower. Housing both the Council Chambers and Citadel Control, the tower is one of the most important buildings on the station. Access to these areas is restricted to those with the appropriate clearance. What happens in Citadel Control? Citadel Control handles all incoming and outbound transit. Every ship within 2,000 kilometers of the Citadel is under the jurisdiction of Citadel Control. At peak capacity, they are responsible for monitoring upwards of a thousand vessels. I'd like to hear more about the Council Chambers. The business of the Council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel Tower. The Council Chambers themselves are truly a magnificent sight to behold, though few get to experience the view in person. Typically, only the counselors, ambassadors, and high-ranking officials, along with various support staff, are allowed access. I'm scheduled to have an audience with the council. Only a handful of visitors to the Citadel are ever granted that privilege. I would be jealous, but that is outside the scope of my programming. What if someone has business with the council? The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through their respective ambassadors. 
Even then, few are given access to the actual council chambers. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf of the citizen. I'd like to know more about the Keepers. Little is known about these peaceful servants of the Citadel, though they are essential to the operation and maintenance of the entire station. Citadel regulations protect the Keepers against interference during the performance of their tasks. Failure to comply will result in harsh penalties. Keepers can be seen in all sections of the Citadel, but are typically found in and around the tower. Any particular reason there are so many Keepers in this area? The Keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the tower houses the Citadel's primary control systems. Many of the station's systems, such as navigation and life support, function automatically. It is believed the Keepers operate those systems from inside the tower's inaccessible core. The Keepers also make frequent appearances in the Council Chamber itself, though they appear to be just passing through on their way to some other destination. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Okie dokie. Elevator go up. The council isn't going to ask me any questions, are they? I doubt it. We've made our reports. Now we just have to trust Ambassador Odina. No, we don't, sir. <laughs> Nice elevator music. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Stall them. Stall the council? Don't be ridiculous. Your investigation is over, Garrus. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Come across anything I should know about? Saren's a specter. Most of his activities are classified. I couldn't find anything solid. But I know he's up to something. Like you humans say, I feel it in my gut. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. Maybe they'll listen to you. You don't want to keep the Council waiting. Okie doke. <clears throat> what a nice fountain. I like the fountain. It's very soothing. I bet all these staircases aren't just for show. They make for good defensive positions if this place is ever attacked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some foreshadowing from Ashley. No! I want to go into all the buildings. All the rooms. How dare you keep me out. Not so sure. The humans are making a strong push, and you can bet the Volus will be right on their coattails if they succeed. Allowing the humans to join us is a sound strategic move, but the Volus? No. The Hanna are likely to be next, then the Elcor. You may be right, though the Hanna need to lighten up a bit first. You just don't like them because you have trouble understanding them. Volus are getting screwed over, man. They've been there for the duration. They may be a little unpleasant, but... Oh well. Galactic politics aren't supposed to be comfortable. No, I'm waiting to speak with one of the Counselor's assistants. I just want to ask a couple of questions. Commander? Uh, 
Okay, good. Got that rapid transit unlocked. I don't think we have to access. Oh, I don't think we have to access them to learn them. We just have to be in the area. This looks like the entrance to some sort of high-tech Marriott. Captain Anderson. The hearing's already started. Come on. The Geth attack is a matter of some concern, but there is nothing to indicate Saren was involved in any way. The investigation by Citadel Security turned up no evidence to support your charge of treason. An eyewitness saw him kill Nihilus in cold blood. We've read the Eden Prime reports, Ambassador. The testimony of one traumatized dock worker is hardly compelling proof. I resent these accusations. Nihilus was a fellow Spectre and a friend. That just let you catch him off guard. Captain Anderson, you always seem to be involved when humanity makes false charges against me. And this must be your protege, Commander Shepard. The one who let the beacon get destroyed. The mission to Eden Prime was top secret. The only way you could know about the beacon was if you were there. With Nihilus gone, his files passed on to me. I read the Eden Prime report. I was unimpressed. But what can you expect from a human? Saren despises humanity. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Your species needs to learn its place, Shepard. You're not ready to join the Council. You're not even ready to join the Spectres. He has no right to say that! That's not his decision! Shepard's admission into the Spectres is not the purpose of this meeting. This meeting has no purpose. The humans are wasting your time, Counselor. And mine. You can't hide behind the Council forever. There is still one outstanding issue. Commander Shepard's vision. It may have been triggered by the beacon. Are we allowing dreams into evidence now? How can I defend my innocence against this kind of testimony? I agree. Our judgment must be based on facts and evidence, not wild imaginings and reckless speculation. Do you have anything else to add, Commander Shepard? You've made your decision. I won't waste my breath. The Council has found no evidence of any connection between Saren and the Geth. Ambassador, your petition to have him disbarred from the Spectres is denied. I'm glad to see justice was served. This meeting is adjourned. Oof. Mistake bringing you into that hearing, Captain. You and Saren have too much history. It made the Council question our motives. I know Saren. He's working with the Geth for one reason. To exterminate the entire human race. Every colony we have is at risk. Every world we control is in danger. Even Earth isn't safe. Tell me about this history between you and Saren. I worked with him on a mission a long time ago. Things went bad. Real bad. We shouldn't talk about this here, but I know what he's like, and he has to be stopped. What's our next step? As a Spectre, he's virtually untouchable. We need to find some way to expose him. What about Garrus, that CSEC investigator? We saw him arguing with the Executor. That's right. He was asking for more time to finish his report. Seems like he was close to finding something on Saren. Any idea where we could find him? I have a contact in CSEC who can help us track Garrus down. His name is Harkin. Forget it. They suspended Harkin last month, drinking on the job. I won't waste my time with that loser. You won't have to. I don't want the Council using your past history with Saren as an excuse to ignore anything we turn up. Shepard will handle this. You can't just cut Captain Anderson out of this investigation. The Ambassador's right. I need to step aside. I need to take care of some business. Captain, meet me in my office later. 
For cocktails. Harkin's probably getting drunk at Cora's Den. It's a dingy little club in the lower section of the wards. Maybe there's another way to find evidence against Saren. You should talk to Barla Vaughn over in the financial district. Rumor has it he's an agent for the Shadow Broker. The Shadow Broker? An information dealer. Buys and sells secrets to the highest bidder. I've heard Barla Vaughn's one of the top representatives. He might know something about Saren, but his information won't come cheap. Our ambassador doesn't seem to get along with the Council. He's just frustrated. The Council's always preaching that we need to be part of the galactic community. Hey, Raven. But for them, it's a one-way street. They want us to expand and settle unstable regions like the Skillian Verge and the Attican Traverse. But when we run into trouble, they don't want to help us out. Everyone knows it's only a matter of time until we get a seat on the Council. The ambassador just thinks it should happen sooner rather than later. And I agree. You don't think much of Harkin. The guy joined CSEC about 20 years ago. He's been an embarrassment to our species ever since. Roughing up suspects in custody, bribery accusations, alcohol and drug use. The embassy used to step in when he got in trouble. But I guess enough was enough. The guy's a scumbag. He should have been cut loose a long time ago. He was one of the first human CSEC officers. Guess it would have looked bad if he got fired. A lot of backroom deals were worked out over the years to keep him on the force. Politics is a dirty business sometimes, but it looks like his time's run out. We've got enough humans in CSEC now to stop protecting him. I thought this embassy was supposed to help humans. Harkin may be human, but he's also an ass. <coughs> he's had more than his share of chances. If the embassy wasn't protecting him, he would have been fired 15 years ago. CSEC is better off without him. I want to know more about the Spectres. They're not your typical government agency. They tend to work alone, behind the scenes. They take care of problems the Council can't. It's not easy preserving peace across an entire galaxy. The Council prefers to use diplomacy and negotiation, but sometimes more extreme measures are needed. How do they decide who becomes a Spectre? You can't just apply to join. There's no training program. Spectres aren't made. They're born. The Council's always looking for exceptional individuals. People who can get the job done. Like you. They've been watching you for years. They see something in you. They want you on their side. Nihilus was supposed to give them a final recommendation. But with him gone, things are still up in the air. What's their command structure like? There is no command structure. Each Spectre answers directly to the Council. Sometimes they're sent on specific missions. Other times, they act on their own. They tend to operate outside the law, do whatever it takes to accomplish their goals. The Council just turns a blind eye. Spectres have a lot of power, Shepard. They sound like shadow operatives. Everything about them is classified. We don't even know how many there are. The latest Alliance estimate puts their numbers under 100. But the Council couldn't do its job without them. They're the Citadel's top agents. The last line of defense. The final option before open war. Mm. The entire galaxy respects and fears them. If a Spectre shows up, you know something big is about to happen. What happens when a Spectre goes rogue? Like Saren? It doesn't happen often. The Council is careful when they select their candidates. But when something does go wrong, there's usually only one solution. Send another Spectre to bring the rogue agent down. Okay, let's get some more info here before we pause. Tell me more about the Shadow Broker. He's a necessary evil of galactic politics. Buying and selling information is a part of the game. And the Shadow Broker just happens to be the best player on the field. Always sells to the highest bidder. Doesn't get involved in politics, doesn't pick sides. A simple system, but it works. He's not a threat to anyone, not directly. He's just a resource we can use, or she is. Or maybe they are. Nobody really knows. Tell me about Barla Vaughn. He specializes in moving large sums of money without leaving a paper trail. A financial genius, doesn't do anything illegal, but he knows all the loopholes. He's got an impressive client list. 
Ambassadors, diplomats, specters. That's probably why the Shadow Broker uses him. You and Saren have a history. What happened? About 20 years ago, I was part of a mission in the Skillian Verge. I was working with Saren to find and remove a known terrorist threat. Saren eliminated his target, but a lot of people died along the way, innocent people. And the official records just covered it all up. But I saw how he operates. No conscience, no hesitation. He'd kill a thousand innocent civilians to end a war without a second thought. Whew. Killing innocents doesn't end wars, it causes them. I know how the world works, Commander. Sometimes you're forced to make unpleasant decisions. But only if there's no other way. Saren doesn't even look for another option. He's twisted, broken. He likes the violence, the killing. And he knows how to cover his tracks. I should go. Good luck, Shepard. I'll be over in the Ambassador's office if you need anything else. Thank you, Captain. That was a lot of exposition there, but it was worth that 12 XP.